In today's episode, we're going to review a Kiesel guitar that was sent to a viewer. I had a viewer of the channel reach out to me and say, I love your videos of Kiesel guitars. I want to order one, and I just hope it comes out as good as yours. And through a pretty long, extensive conversation back and forth with John, what we decided was we would let Kiesel send the guitar to him, and then once he got it, he would turn around and send it right to me. So that's why on today's deep dive, we're gonna be checking out a Kiesel guitar sent to a viewer to see is it as good as the ones that they sent me to review. So let's get started in today's deep dive. What we're looking at here is a Kiesel Aries neck through guitar with all the upgrades. It has a Buckeye Burl veneer on the headstock to match the body with a ebony truss rod cover right there. And then a graphite nut with a burl maple fretboard that looks beautiful. It has a 12 to 16 inch compound radius. And of course a Buckeye burl top on Koa sides, which is just absolutely breathtaking. Look at that Koa. Looking at the back, you can see those Koa wings in between that neck through design, which is a seven piece multi-laminate neck through, which is walnut, purple heart, maple, walnut, purple heart, maple. So seven pieces right there. It also has a purple heart cavity cover that's signed by Jeff Kiesel. And then the neck is satin finished. You can see right there, they score it and then they make it satin so it feels great. And then it has upgraded gold locking tuning keys. Now, looking at the back, you're going to see a battery compartment. So you're thinking active pickups. Well, you're half right. It has passive pickups. In fact, in the bridge, it has the lithium pickup. And in the neck, it has the beryllium, which is my favorite combination. It has an upgraded transducer system, which is a acoustic. So you can switch between just the magnetics, the magnetics and the acoustic. And of course, just the acoustic. And uh, you have a five-way switch and volume, tone, and then a volume for the acoustic. Just for fun, can we take a few seconds and just take in how beautiful this top and this guitar is? This is a beautiful combination of woods, John. I think you did a fantastic job. This is just gorgeous. Okay, so let's get into the geeky stuff on this guitar and see how well they made it. The guitar is weighing in at seven pounds, six, 7.6, so just over seven and a half pounds. Now that the guitar is tuned up, let's take a look at the relief and the relief on this guitar is fantastic. You can see just a little teeny gap right there and that just means it has a little bit of relief and that's absolutely perfect. So let's see how they set up the action. And the action is sitting at, man, this is super low. This is 1.25 millimeters. This is definitely very low action, which is very nice. Let's check to see if they have any fret issues, high frets. Okay, absolutely no dead spots whatsoever. With beautifully leveled frets, let's check the fret ends. And wow, these are great. This feels like a baby's butt. Look at that, no marks whatsoever. Five out of five, definitely. So let's try the bass side. And wow, it's just as good. There's just, it's just, look at that, five out of five. That's perfect, that's what we're looking for. We mentioned how good the frets are, but did we talk about why they're gold? Well, they're gold because they're called Evo Gold frets. Now there's no gold in them, but there's no silver and nickel silver frets either. What this is, is fret wire that's in between stainless steel and nickel. So in other words, a stainless being the hardest and nickel being the softest, this is right in the middle. Why would you want that? Well, one, it looks cool because it goes with this gold hardware, but also because some players think the stainless steel sound kind of bright and have an overtone to them and some people don't want want their frets to wear out like nickel. And this is the compromise right in the middle. Looking at the nut, we see it, it's at 42.79 millimeters or about 1.68 inches. Now testing the nut to see how well they cut the slots, you can see they are perfect. What we're doing for the test is we're taking the exact same fret wire size, medium jumbo, putting it underneath the nut at the same radius to see where do they land. And they land right on top of the fret, which is perfect because if they were cut any deeper, you would get buzzing and uh, the first notes would sound almost dead. And if they were cut shallow, the notes would sound fine, but it would be really difficult when playing those notes on the first fret or trying to do a bar chord on the first fret. And like they said in the specifications, the fretboard is 12 to 16 inch radius, but what does the back of the neck feel like? The shape is really nice. It's most reminiscent to a 60s era Fender Strat, definitely around the 12th fret, and just a little smaller than a 60s Strat in the first fret area, and definitely that small, soft C, soft U shape. If you played some of the really nice feeling Schecter necks out at the uh, local stores, this is gonna feel pretty reminiscent to that. Now we know how the neck's gonna feel. Let's look at the thickness, and it's at 20.07 millimeters at the first fret, or 0.79. And at the 12th fret, it's 22.47 millimeters or 0.88. 
I mentioned that John followed my lead and I love the lithium in the bridge and the beryllium in the neck. And for this combo, what I want you to think is lithium is gonna be like a super distortion and the beryllium is gonna be more like a PAF. Now, looking at these pickups, we can see that the bridge is at 14.36K and it has an EQ curve that's slightly in the bass register. You can see it's pretty even, but a little bit on the bassy side, which gives it a little kick and makes it not so bright and harsh. Looking at the neck pickup, it's kind of like we predicted, it's 7.4K, but more importantly, the EQ curve is pretty flat. You can see just a little bit of a mid bump, and this is nice because there's different types of PAF style pickups, and some of the magic ones really push the mids. And that's why I like it. It's like a super distortion PAF combo. But of course, that's to my ears and taste very. So now let's take a look at the electronics and you can see there's a lot going on here. I like that they took the time to zip tie up everything and make it look neat. And I love that there's no burn marks from the soldering iron, which means that the person who did it knew what they were doing. Now I want to bring your attention to this small alpha pot right there. I, sometimes I hear the viewers on the channel say small alpha pots are cheap and it means the guitar is junk. And that's not entirely true. First of all, we don't even know because I didn't test it if this is just a 25k potentiometer. You have a transducer system in this guitar, which means all the electronics are probably running through that board. And then the pot is probably running that board. And it could be just a 25K potentiometer, which they wouldn't have a larger size to use if they wanted to. However, that being said, saying that a small potentiometer is bad and a big potentiometer is good is really silly considering $4,000 amplifiers have these same small potentiometers. What it is that I always point out when I do point out that I like the bigger potentiometers, what I'm really talking about is I like the way they feel. Okay, so let's get back to it. I like that they're using the shielding tape and I like that they come over the edge so it will connect to the back plate and I love these brass inserts for the screws. The back plate is wood as you can see but it also has shielding tape as well so the cavity is totally insulated. If you're wondering what that black pad is for so the shielding won't touch the five-way switch and short out. Looking at this model on their website, the base price for this guitar is $1,599 with no upgrades whatsoever. However, John went all in and he had this customed out and it hit just about $4,000. Now to give you a reference of resale values, I looked on the market, completed sales, and I found guitars like this with similar specifications that were pricing at about $3,000, $3,200. Not much less, it's not a huge depreciation, it's not like half. However, something to think about, you guys know Nathan, a buddy of mine, works at the Jack Jackson Charvel Custom Shop and he brought his Jackson neck through guitar and that's a base price model of $4,000. So you can imagine getting something like this in another brand is going to be exponentially more than what John paid. So to test this guitar and the way it sounds, I have it plugged into my Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb and we're going to see how the neck pickup sounds and we're just on the neck. We're not using any electron uh, magnetic, or sorry, piezo system. Here we go. Now we're running through the bad cat and we're going to use the overdrive we're going to start with the bridge pickup. <laughs> Go ahead and go to a single coil. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the Ingle Fireball 25 and see how aggressive this guitar gets.
Okay, so some final thoughts and things I didn't get to cover. The edge is not rolled and it's not very hard either. So again, it's a very soft roll, but again, it, you can feel the edge. Um, and for a guitar like this with a compound radius and this kind of neck, uh, that's kind of what you want. You don't want it to be too rolled. It won't do anything for you. Um, for this, it feels great. Obviously the frets we talked about are beautifully uh, treated and done very well. But the best part about this whole thing is the fact that knowing that somebody's gonna get a great guitar after I recommended one. Sometimes when you review things and you do videos, you know, you don't know what their experience is gonna be like. And this isn't everyone's experience, but this is definitely gonna be John's experience. John, you're a very lucky man. And uh, I'm sure you can't wait for me to get this back in the case, in the box and back to you, which will come shortly. I'll make sure we swag you up a little bit too for sponsoring this video by letting us have this guitar to review it on the channel. Thank you guys so much for uh, indulging this. And until the next time, know your gear.